Um, and I'll hand over to Patricia. Uh, yep, basically, I just um, we uh, we are inspired by our note taking from the uh, Mozilla community building uh, movement and. Um, they have a, a proper code of conduct. We don't have a code of conduct. We are a friendly community. I don't think we need one. Um, but this is just a, a reminder that this is supposed to be a friendly meeting where um, uh, you can be honest with uh, with us and um, you know put your criticism and any ideas you have towards us, um, but in a, a respectful and inclusive and friendly friendly way if um, possible and also um, uh, yeah basically be nice to each other uh, and to us as well um, if you have any issues and any any comments that you want to leave um, uh, anything that you um, yeah you want to to report you can do that to Magdalena or myself and we should probably also put uh, someone on there um, for definitely for next time who actually isn't in the meeting. So just as an independent um, person, if there if there should be um, anything that you want to um, to report. Yep, that's basically it. Friendly space. And thank you for joining. Okay, one very quick thing. I have a doggy sleeping in the same room, so I do apologize for the snoring. Um, so uh, the goal of today's call is to go um, through, I believe, which is, which is one of the key functionalities in DMP Online for providing feedback. Um, so we'll go through very easy um, and hopefully simple configuration for administrators. Um, I'll just explain the practicalities, how it currently works in our interface about where to comment and very quickly also show you how users can request feedback. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be going through more things um, like you can see in the agenda. Um, I'll be touching on later while Patricia will be saying about the features um, and other possible extensions for this current functionality. Um, um, you're good? Um, basically, um, before we go through um, the, the feature and maybe answer some of the questions um, why, why some of you are using it or are, are not yet using it, um, we'd be really interested in uh, a little bit of your experience for those who um, are using the feature. Basically, how does it work for you if you're not using it or just or using it a little bit, how does the whole workflow um, work on your end? You know, do you use anything else instead? Do you need other systems to make it work for you because the MP Online doesn't have the full functionality? Um, so, yeah, we, we basically, um, I think the usability testing that Diana nicely carried out that is now also published as a blog post for those who haven't uh, seen that yet. Um, try to find that and put that in the notes as well so you can read that. Um, that basically highlighted that about half of you are using it and the other half isn't really like sure yet what that is. And it might be that you just, you know, don't really know how to switch it on and how it would work for you, um, which is what the session might address. But it, it might also just be that, you know, you have um, other reasons and we'd be really interested to hear a little bit about that. If someone wants to do that vocally, um, feel free to unmute and just talk to us. Um, but there's also the option to just type in the chat and uh, in the note taking document and we pick that up um, and then you can stay anonymous if you, if you don't want your, your institution or your name to associate it with, with any workflow or anything. Um, so yeah, we have a few minutes for that before we get started. Um, we kindly have like one comment uh, while people who want to like type or think um, that was left by someone who can't join us today. Um, basically said like def there's definitely always the email 
inbox that works um, alongside DMP online because people yeah. still feel they need to send an email even if the system has a notification functionality I think like a, a quite a lot of users might not be entirely sure where notifications end up and how they get picked up so um, there's uh, there's definitely um, still users that sent another email just to inform people from you giving feedback that they've sent a request for feedback um, so that 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 is quite interesting but also not surprising especially if it's close to a deadline I guess for a researcher and they really want to be sure that their request is seen and that the MP is looked at um, so yeah don't think we can um, create a system that that cancels out email completely but if you do have um, other uh, other ideas or experiences that you'd like to share please do so you well, can... okay, go ahead. Okay. well maybe uh, I'm Madeleine from the TU Delft library maybe specific for us for our institution not sure if there are any other universities but we have the same uh, but we have more than one or two reviewers so we have a, uh, a group of data stewards, eight data stewards, who are all providing feedback. And um, depending on the faculty uh, where they are based. Huh? Um, so, and that's providing feedback. Uh, can be sometimes an issue which data steward needs to respond to a specific researcher. I'm not sure if I make myself clear, but. <laughs> And I, I, think, guess, yeah. I guess yeah, that's where the email comes in then because they know their data steward, so they let them know that they've put something in. All right. Yeah. You mean you mean you're having problems knowing who provided feedback, where you are in the process of providing feedback? Now when we when we when we receive uh, uh, when we receive um, a request for feedback, then we at, at our ends uh, need mm -hmm. to find to which specific data stewards the feedback request has to go right okay so you would like some form of a, a facility that assigns a steward to it or yeah or something that that is done uh, in the system or, or mm -hmm. i'm not sure you can you can set up a, a group of of uh, admins and that's depending from where the request comes from, uh, the, the request is assigned to a specific data steward. Well, okay. I'm not sure. It's just... <laughs> it's an, no, no, no. It, it's an issue that has been raised before. So I'm just yeah. trying to clarify to make sure that we have clear in our heads what you would like. You would like some form of assignment. You take this one, yeah? And finish with yeah. it. Something like that, yeah? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's um that, that that is useful feedback from like a yeah a specific situation and that um i think also explains why what um your your colleague has left us as a comment so um that makes sense in context um feel free to um you know keep on typing in there um but i think um we're now coming to the the main part of uh of this which is um magdalena giving you a quick run through of um, of the feature, how to set it up if you haven't done it, um, what to pay attention to, and then um, we can pick up the discussion um, afterwards again. Because I'm using this GoToMeeting through a incognito, um, it's showing me something very strange. I can't just go straight into sharing my screen. So apologies for all of these fun things that normally never happen um, in our drop-in sessions. I'm not entirely sure why there are all of these travels extra happening today. Um, I'm just trying to click on sharing my screen. Uh, it's asking me to rejoin the meeting and restart, so I'm very sorry. I'll probably need to run out quickly in order for this functionality to work. Um, 
sorry about this. At least all the problems pop up in the first session. That means after this, they all will run smoothly. Yeah, potentially. But also, um, we're yeah, um, probably going to run the next one on uh, on Zoom just to understand if that makes a difference because we the university provides us both um, both systems. So um, yeah, if there's some appetite for for you as the community discuss zoom has these breakout rooms where you could Hello. go off and have some conversations so we might try that magdalena you're here twice now but i hope that doesn't make i hope that doesn't create the echo um that's normally the problem but i don't know why i'm saying twice but as long as you can see my screen and as long as you can hear me hopefully all is going to be well now okay so um if that's all right, I'll just uh, start with providing the feedback uh, functionality. Um, so first things first, um, in order for you to be able to provide the feedback, you need to have um, the administrator's privileges, which was one of the things I was emphasizing in my email. If you don't have the admin privileges, you won't be able to see the staff. Um, so when you click on the staff, um, there is this link to organization details uh, where you click and in here um, you will need to set up the contact email and link text and this is where once your researchers are requesting the feedback this is where the emails will go to so i think i would just recommend using if you're having some more generic help desk um, or maybe some specific research data management help desk this is the place um, for it to go um, and you can just copy and paste the contact email so it's actually easier to understand uh, what it is and the email address will appear here so if your researchers um, want to contact you directly they can just hit on this and it will lead them to go into the mailbox straight away and once you set up um, the email address where you want the, con uh, the feedbacks to go to, you have the second tab on the organization details, which is called request feedback. And by default, um, it's always switched off. So unless your institution has switched it on, um, your researchers are unable to ask for feedback. And if you are subscribed to DMP online, um, might be shame not to get the feedbacks requested but if that's a preferred um workflow or activity at your institution um you just do whatever is best for you but you can switch it on easily and uh, just by clicking on and we do have a sample message which you can easily just copy and paste but there are two things i think i would like to highlight and that's you can mention whether you have a respawn time and how long it's going to take you to get back. So I think in our default message, we say 48 hours, but this might be unrealistic for some institutions. So just make sure you edit this. And again, um, this is the email address. Um, if there is a different email address where you want your researchers to contact you to um, this email, work then feel free just to change this email address to anything uh, more specific you wish and you will have to hit save so by doing this uh, we have now allowed um, to for the users to receive the request um, so i'll just show you where the requested feedback plans will go to so you go again through the admin interface and you click here on plans and I just created two dummy uh, dummy ones. So I can click, for example, on this one uh, and you will just have a direct access through here. Um, but another way actually is directly through your email. There is just a link for you to follow. Unfortunately, I don't have an example for this to show you, but that should be hopefully relatively straightforward. But another way to see uh, the requested uh, feedback for plans is directly through the admin interface, like I said. So you will just need to click on the plan and you will need to hit here on the right plan and you can see here the answers your researchers have provided and then here you will go into comments 
and you can see um, previously I was testing this and just edit some answers. So this is the place where you can just say, um, please expand on this section or anything else you wish to, and you'll just hit save. And this is how you can just go through each individual questions and every time you just hit here on comments and just click here, save. However, by just clicking save, this doesn't really uh, trigger or complete the whole feedback um, review. What you will need to do in order to complete the feedback and notify the researcher is to go back to the plans page. And there is a link uh, which says complete. So we can just click on this now. And once I click complete, you can also see here um, the researcher will receive an email now from you and uh, notifying them that you have provided them with the feedback and they'll be able to go through the comments. I would like to also show you what happens uh, for the users and how they can request a feedback. Um, so this is you know, um, how your users go through the Create Plans page. And I just hit here, create plan. And once you allow the feedback to be requested, they'll see the step request feedback. It doesn't appear um, to the users, uh, for, for the users in the institutions, which institution didn't switch it on. So once you switch this on, this is what your researchers will be able to see. And this is the sample message as well, which we inserted. So I'm saying we'll respond to the request within 48 hours and that's the email address so I just hit here and this will just trigger an email to our help desk and then I think I already covered um, how to how to go about providing feedback but I think this is like just a quite quick overview and summary of how this functionality currently works um, but if you have any questions, I think Patricia will have um, some more interesting insights into how we want to improve this functionality and what we are planning to do here. Um, but I'll just hand over, I think, to Patricia now, if that's all right, and potentially stop sharing my screen if that's not needed anymore. Yeah, if you stop, then I can take over. Um, mm -hmm. So, so basically, um, I've gone through um, some of the open tickets that you have uh, have raised with us um, of improvements that you would uh, would like to to make so we're just basically going through uh, through them again just to i guess remind you what what we know about already um and give you the opportunity to to um update uh, and add uh, any any comments on what you want on, on what is there already um if you have completely new ideas uh, we would like to hear those as well obviously um, but yeah, this is basically just a, a quick um, yeah, run through the feedback we've received from you so far, um, a making sure that we that you are like ensuring you that we are aware of them and um, uh, on some of those um, issues, providing you a little insight in, in where we are with, um, with addressing them. So the first one is um, differentiating feed, uh, feedback between the collaborators and the um, uh, admin comments. So that is basically uh, my DMP online is doing, uh, my go to meeting is doing something weird. So oh, need to. figured that out yeah here we here we go so basically what that means is um as a normal user 
they can collaborate with their colleague, uh, colleagues on a data management plan as well and they can leave comments and then at the moment when you come in as an admin um, and you're doing the official plan review as requested that shows just up in that comment section as well and um, there's not really a, a quick way to see what's an official admin review comment from a, a data steward and what's basically just conversations between people um, editing that, uh, that data management plan anyway. So uh, a quick sneak peek on what our idea is. Um, basically, our developers has, have played around just to make that visible um, a little bit more. So um, yeah, at the moment, our idea is basically that the comments from um, administrators the, they they aren't like white on white background, but they are on a slightly gray background, and they also get highlighted with um, the color that if you have like a custom uh, installation, you have your color set up that basically would um, follow the same color scheme. So that's what we have currently to play around on one of our test versions, and um, would be a fairly quick functionality to include when we when we do the Rails 5 work, for example. So if you like that, that would be an, an easy one for us to introduce. Um, if you have suggestions how to, um, yeah, how to else display that, if you say, say like Ray isn't good, um, want some so you have other ideas on how to highlight an app and comment and please let us know and we can um, investigate there how we can um, make that work as well. But yeah, that's basically the, the sneak peek that we have. Um, the other things that we are aware of um, I think this is basically uh, what Madeleine has raised, which is um, a bit more detail to that um, plan review page that Magdalena has shown, where you could potentially pick people. Um, you have a, a little bit of a progress re re um, review where um, people can highlight how far they've gotten and also you don't, you have like more options uh, in the actions um, than just the complete button which is uh, fairly easy to click on um, and then the plan is gone and you can't do anything with it um, any longer so this is this is slightly more difficult to implement but we know that this is something that quite a few of you would like potentially with like automatic assignment to people based on the school and the department are in. So um, just, yeah, letting you know that that's there. If there's anything uh, uh, on there that you would like to add, you can comment either on the ticket or in um, the note-taking document. And we, um, we, we will keep track of that and, and note that down. Oops. Another one I think is uh, uh, me linking to the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, and I can't see my my URL bar at the moment, but basically um, Magdalena has just shown that um, for the user, oh, maybe I can do that as well. Yep, here I can demonstrate that basically you see the message already before pressing the request feedback button. So um, I guess for some, some users might um, forget that they actually have to press the button and wait for this to show up in their in their inbox um, or uh, wait for the confirmation message up here um, to 
uh, ensure that the feedback is uh, sent off. So basically the, the idea here is to keep that hidden away until the button is pressed and then show that automated message that you have put in once the user has actually sent off the request. Um, so that's that's uh, on the ideas list as well. Um, another idea is to um, allow you as admins to comment proactively so you don't have to wait until um, a user presses the request feedback button but you could um, scout for um, data management plans that are fairly either just just being started or close to completion and you could actively go in and um, leave comments and um, the last one is basically that uh, one that is probably not that big a deal but uh, at the moment um, in the request of field in your overview isn't actually the person has that has requested the review but the person that has uh, created the initial data management plan so that in the system is kind of the owner of the data management plan but not the actual owner of the uh, feedback request so um, that is um, something for us to look at as well to actually make sure that if you want to follow up outside um, that you're doing that with the right person so this is basically all the feedback um, that we have um, yeah, uh, on, on our system and our ticket system as things you would like us to address um, that we all hope to get around to sooner or later. Um, we're still finishing up the RAIDS 5 thing, so uh, we still have to, to decide what, the, um, but what we um, tackle after that for the rest of the year. Um, but it's not forgotten about. We always come back to that. If you raise it, we, we uh, make sure that it's tracked if it's not there. And yeah, if you have any comments on the new bits that you've seen, please do let us know. If not, um, there's now time to ask any other questions on mm -hmm. the feature, um, anything else. Yes, I have a question about it. More about, um, because I now understand that these are all issues that you are going to address together mm -hmm. uh, um, for the feedback request functionality. Um, is, there, uh, is there any estimates, estimation of the timeline for this? or? Uh, no, that's basically um, uh, what I was saying. Uh, trying to say it's like we, we don't know which piece of work we are um, gonna pick up after after Rails 5 so we basically need to um, yeah do a little bit of um, decision making of uh, what is most urgent of the things of the additional features that we have um, yeah. and we might actually go out um, to you as the community to help us with that so uh, we do have uh, the idea to to basically look at all the things that are open and put some in front of you and get a feeling of what you as the whole community would like to see first. Yeah. Um, but the idea so, is that they will, that, that, that they will be that they will be released uh, all together. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. Not so necessarily. that okay. that, that mm -hmm. depends a bit because some of the things have um, uh, some of those are you know bigger pieces where we might address uh, a lot of, of the issues in one go. Um, some have might have dependencies on, on other things in the system that aren't that obvious, um, and then they might be solved when that other piece of uh, work is addressed. So um, I've basically grouped them together because they are all related to what we were showing you today, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they all will be addressed in one go. Um, Would you like? Sorry, uh, I'm Marta Nicholson. I'm one of the developers. So, um, based on what uh, Patricia was just saying, so we are currently finishing the uh, migration to Rails 5, which is quite a big uh, job. Um, once we finish that and it's a stable one, if that's going to be released, um, 
and we will be able to then start addressing uh, small basically it's creating package what we do is then small releases um, and it could be that we integrate some of those features with other features is as we are preparing the package and as a as a uh, if bugs come along or things like that that will actually involve working with this particular areas of the code then we will pack them up and we release them uh, and once they have been uh, tested and verified then we pass them on into our live ser services so until then we have to wait um, so we can't give you a specific date on that because everything is, is subjective to being developed tested and only after that but we are constantly every week we go through the list of things that are in the backlog as we call it and see which ones we can address and which ones we can move forward um so we are always looking at what new features you guys are requesting um and seeing if maybe there's something that could be integrated in this release and that it goes forward so um we just have to ask for a bit of a time it's quite a bit of work <laughs> the list seems to be endless <laughs> Yeah, and like once we have, because we now have the end of Rails 5 inside, um, we uh, we are sitting down and actually creating a bit more of a of a roadmap um, as as well for the project that the that we're doing um, with uh, the colleagues in California that basically addresses most of the features, but then DMP Online has a few extra bits and pieces that we have introduced to make sure we can, um, you know, um, we can basically support all your client features on different installations, which is something that the Californians uh, Californians don't do. So we basically, um, yeah, in the next few weeks, you should get a, a full roadmap of what is coming for um, the basically central code piece, piece that we're working on with uh, California together. And then we can basically see what uh, we want to put on top of that um, from the, mm -hmm. Uh, from the client community request. So we're, we're looking at basically the work for, for the rest of the year and potentially also early next year, uh, mm -hmm. now that we have an idea that Reds 5 is coming to an end. And that gives you some basic timeline, still not uh, exact dates, but at least gives you an idea of um, what we are, we're tackling on first. And as I said, we also have the ideas to Bring you actually in as a community to set priorities for mm -hmm. for what you would like to see. Um, hi, it's it's Chris Tibbs from Exeter. Um, I seem to remember at a session potentially earlier this year there was discussion around the idea that if you're providing feedback um, and that depending on the researchers' notification settings that they're getting an email every time you add a comment and rather than having a single email when you click the complete has mm -hmm. that was there anything implemented or yeah so there was and now by default um this is switched off if you go into the edit profile um thing it's the third tab here yes which is notification preferences the link to a new comment has been added to my DMP. It's not ticked on anymore. Yeah, I think Patricia, is it you showing it live as we speak? So your researchers are not receiving um, an email every time a comment is being added that has been already worked on. Okay, so that's set up by default, okay. But it also yeah. means they're not getting emails if one of their colleagues is adding a comment also, I guess. That's a good question. I think you're right, they're probably not because a comment includes the, no, the comments. No, so, no, so you, they will they will or receive it, or if that is ticked, if it's not, they won't receive a comment. They would have to log in and see it, or wait until the process is set to. But yeah, if you have ideas of how to, um, um how to how to refine that basically feel free to either open an issue yourself or put it in the in the note taking documents and then we um move that across 
Um, could a complete button also be added within the plan itself? So basically what you mean is if you are an... Uh, da, 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 administrator, basically, you're going through commenting and then when you're done at the bottom, you have a complete review button here. Is that is that what you... I'm assuming it will be probably more in the plan, not in each section or phases, you probably yeah, like the in the general. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, if you okay. scroll up, actually, if you scroll up, I think it, it might be more where all the way up. So you see pro the project details or something in those lines where you have the information about that plan um, or the plan overview, maybe something like that. I don't know if that's what. Uh, no, I think I end. think like yeah, like. At the bottom, so so you basically you don't have to leave the actual when, data management plan to go so somewhere when have, else. Okay, yeah, I can see the the point. Yeah, so you don't have to go back into the plan page uh, with every yep. other plan to make it complete. Um, is something that I can look into. I have no idea what that involves in terms of developer of effort, but uh, we'll make a note of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's a good one. Thank you. You need to try to maximize your screen, Patricia. Sorry, someone is asking. It it, it is. Um, <laughs> I can't I can't do more. Okay. Um, I don't know whether we have any more questions. Um, I'm just looking at the timelines. Although I'm much aware we were delayed today um i don't want to hold anyone else if you made any other plans afterwards but this document is opened um you can still add some questions um even after the session and i'm more than happy to go through them um and try to provide the answers within the document um but unless anything unless there is anything you would like to still raise just right now um i think we can just move on to the closing, um, if that's all right. So I would like you to feel free to invite others and share their recording and notes uh, from the session. And feel free also to share these uh, shares and shout outs and um, let us know or let your colleagues know if there is anyone else who do you think will be interested to join these. Um, you can also see like the usual links to our Twitter account and LinkedIn account and monthly newsletter. I already started a playlist on the YouTube. Um, so after the session, I'll just do upload the video um, on the YouTube. And we won't be experiencing the same travels um, at the beginning because we already um, set up our next uh, demo session to be in Zoom, so you can see uh, the details again in the agenda. Um, and we have decided to do so because maybe the maybe the next inter um, session is going to be even more interactive, and maybe you would be interested to be split into smaller groups and just discuss the feature um, and functionalities and how you do this at your institutions. Um, with other people from other institutions. So we thought it might be just a better platform for doing so. But we, we tried GoToMeeting and failed. So um, it's going to be in Zoom next time. Um, our next the DMP online demo session is going to be on the 27th of October um, at half past 10. And you can also vote on which uh, session you want us to do next. So just based on the voting uh, initial voting from august um there were two that were having just the same preference so um you can just hit um on which one you prefer and if there is any feedback how you would like us to improve these sessions or anything else you would like to share with us um tell us what you liked or what you disliked feel free uh, to add this into the comments um but i think this is everything from me um Thank you, Patricia, for joining. And Deanna, we were joined today by our colleague Deanna as well, and Martin Nicholson, our software developer. So thank you all for 
joining and thank to all the attendees and for your helpful questions and suggestions and ideas and i think we hope to see you next month yeah thank, thank you. you brilliant thank Thanks. you goodbye bye-bye